Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Talk About Transformers. Today we're going to be taking a look at Kingdom Blaster. Before we get into the figure himself, we'll go ahead and take a look at the box. Here at the top you have Autobot Blaster and Eject, Takara Tomy, Transformers Generations, down the side Hasbro, Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy 8+. There you have an image of Blaster in his boombox mode, stereo, boombox, whatever you want to call it. There he is on the side. He is a Voyager class in multiple languages, and he transforms into a robot that resembles this image. Here at the top we have an Autobot symbol again with War for Cybertron trilogy, uh, WFC K44. Here we have the side of the box with your Kingdom Trilogy again, authentic Transformers logo. You've got the nice little mural there with Prime and Primal and Tigatron and the Golden Disc and the Ark is crashed and all the other good characters. The back, that is my neighbor's dog if you can hear it braying. Focus on the box, not the Ark. There you have him, you know what, we'll go ahead and just zoom in and hold the box back, there we go, we'll get some light in here, Transformers more than meets the eye, there you have Blaster, the figure itself in robot mode, it shows Eject can store, there he is as a studio stereo boombox majig 20 steps, there's Eject in his robot and tape modes. He has got everything piping. I'm not a fan of that, but I am a fan of Eject, and I wasn't before I got the figure, so that's good. On this side, we already showed it. Then on the bottom, you have the barcode and the manufacturing and all this and that and the good things. And that's it for the box. Uh, he came with a black arachnia card, so I'm not going to get into that. We'll just go ahead and put it off to the side and take a look at Blaster himself. Um, before we take a look at Blaster himself, we'll put him down and we'll take a look at some of his accessories. He comes with Eject here. So we'll take a look at his accessory, Eject, his little minion. You've got the molded in little tape deck, uh, tape spirals for when it needs to play and rewind. This is how it moves the tape from one side to another. Because um, they're called tapes because they have tape in them, if anyone is not old enough to know that. And then from the back, he's just got robot stuff hanging out. Um, now I'm assuming he is... This clear plastic because uh, Blaster is going to be re-released in the Legacy line and they all have them Spark, Energon, Weapon, Dealios. So I wonder if they made him clear plastic so that they could add him into that line, which they're going to without changing much about him. But there's Eject. There's the top of Eject. There's the bottom of Eject. We'll go ahead and inject Eject into... Uh, Blaster there you can see the inside there you get the details to make it look like it's gonna hold on to the tape There's a little nub lip in here that he sits behind and That'll keep him from flopping about in there too much And then you can close it to open that up. You just push this whole Bar of buttons There's one big button molded to look like four individual buttons So you just push that and it flops open now you have eject in there his other accessory is this blaster for blaster blasters blaster i really like it i i just like the scoped rifle look that it has you got a couple of uh blast ports so focus on the gun you got a couple of blast ports on the side there the handle is good and i've seen a couple of people review it and you've got various ports on the back um you've got a post here that you could plug the blast ports into you've got a pseudo port here port here port here port here um and so you could just plug it in like this and i was trying to find a way that i liked it where it would hide it from the back then i realized the best way to store it is to have it stored in plain sight i'll plug it in right here get it lined up 
now it almost looks like it's the antenna for the boom box so you can get your AM and your FM broadcast signals in so now when I store him in alt mode he does have his antenna gun and that's what I do we'll go ahead and take a look at the details here so you've got the nice Autobot symbol with white outline on the chest you've got volume and tuning knobs galore uh, there looks like places where uh, you have other various buttons this almost <laughs> makes me think of a, a CD uh, slit but that's not what that is it's probably um, for track searching possibly I've never owned a, a very old boom box I did have an original Walkman though you got more knobs down here um, there's this random hole and I thought I had a component that fell out but it's been that way since I got him I looked in images that I took and so there's just a random hole there I don't know if that's supposed to be like that's where the recording light would be if you were recording the tape I don't know you got a little speaker down here you got a big old speaker up here and some nice grating in there for the speaker look same thing on the other side here you've got these details on the side you've got the foots and the turnaround speakers for robot mode you've got the handle up top the back is not perfect um, it's not perfectly flush either it bumps out a little bit and it's clearly just the robot back but it is a far 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 improvement from the remolded soundwave figure we got you've got stamped in number there lots of molded details back here you got some red paint down here for robot mode and here is the bottom it just looks very sound wave on the bottom with the legs sprawled out and whatnot here is the top with the big old handle I do like it a lot so go ahead and get into some size comparisons here and then we'll take a look at his transformation alrighty there you got him with the Rubik's Cube so you got a Rubik's Cube and a transforming box he is with Mr. Gormagala statue he is with the Volkswagen Bumblebee he is with the Soundwave Earth Mode tape deck figure here he is with Studio Series um, Jazz my friend John that I've mentioned a few times on the channel um, likes Jazz and Blaster they were two of his favorites from G1 so there they are together and last but not least there he is with Prime Jr look at him there alrighty and that's about it for the uh, size comparisons so we'll go ahead and do his transformation here um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is unplug the handle and break it in half. Um, it, there is a kind of notch in the back here, but I found it's easiest to unplug it if you start bending it out first. It doesn't really slide in super smoothly, so it's kind of jarring. So to me, it works smoothest if you start turning it and then unplug it. Um, if the gun wasn't here, you could just fold them both back. So. I'll spin this around and pretend I folded it back and then you're gonna take these ports and put them onto these posts easy peasy there you go um, I'm gonna leave his gun there the whole transformation because you literally do not have to move it if you do not want to we're gonna come to this flap and pull it up you've got a tab here tab here and you've got a slot here slot here um, you can fold it up all the way or you can kind of leave it at an angle it's not going to hurt anything either way. Then you're going to grab on the gray part and you're going to kind of pull forward and out to dislodge the arm or uh, yeah, dislodge the arm from the leg. Um, and I'm going to show that in reverse because when you are going back into tape mode, you've got this black tab here that has to go into this slot on the back of his elbow. So you want to make sure that that is in properly, properly, I said. And you want to make sure that's secured and you want to hold that in place as you spin this back forward and make sure the hand is bent out of your way and then 
put it back into place when you're going back into his boombox mode. So that is how you're going to reverse those legs when you're going back into boombox mode. Um, and then you've also got a little slot here that this tab will go into and the hand is going to slide into this hollow gap here uh, for more connecting points. And that might just be all of them. I might be missing one, but those are your major ones. You want to make sure that this ends up clipping in here. You want to make sure that this tab goes into the arm and you want to make sure the hand is going into this hollow space so it's not getting in your way. So we're going to finish folding the leg down. Go ahead and fold this panel down flat and rotate this in until it's nice and secure. It doesn't really peg in so much as it fits right in there and the whole panel itself is almost like a peg. Then we'll go ahead and rotate the red towards the front because this is his butt plate so we want the back of his legs towards the front. Go ahead and do it on the other side. Just pull it away, fold it down, disconnect it from the arm, fold our red flap down, fold the whole panel in, rotate the leg. At this point we can go ahead and spin his waist around 180 degrees so we've got the front of his legs here. You're going to push on one side or the other of these black circles to dislodge them, spin them around, and clip them back into place for your speakers. Then rotate the ankle a bit and fold his foot out. That's just the easiest way to get his foot out, no ifs, ands, or buts. Fold the foot down, rotate the ankle back up. Now you've got his legs all done. For the arms, pull them out a little bit. You're going to have a little notch tab here, notch here, and that's going to actually click into place. Fold the hand, and that's going to kind of soup into place. Rotate it around. You've got one arm all done. Same thing on the other side. Click. Soup. Rotate, and you're done with that. Um, and we'll get into some of the movement on the hands when we go into articulation. And then the last thing you have to do is open up this back panel. Um, you don't have to turn his head around, but I found that getting his head out is easiest if you just get a fingernail in there and pull it up using that little slice. And I literally just like clipped my fingernail, so I barely have any um, compared to normal. And I'm still able to get it out that way, leaving his head uh, where the face is forward. Um, there's less to get a hold of, but there, there you have him. Uh, Kingdom Blaster in his robot mode. So we'll go ahead and show off his details for you real quick. And then we'll get into his minion transformation and accessories. There you have him. Mine's a little bit of paint missing on his one eye, which looks kind of goofy when you look at it up close. But when you're looking at it farther back, it's harder to notice. Um, chest has got the same details as before. You've got this nice black paint up in the shoulder area for um, just color break up the hinges in the inner arm. All that is black plastic with the red plastic and then the black hands for more color break up on the arms. You've got that gray plastic in the legs with the red paint I mentioned earlier for color break up there with some black. And you've got these new speaker details that we spun around to make his legs have the speakers like they should on the front. It's a nice way of getting that done. It's a little bit of a gap above his feet, but that's par for the course for the way his feet transform. Um, if the G1 figure, which I've never had, is anything like that, they've probably got similar gaps. Going up the side, you've got the handle there, plugged in nicely. Uh, there you have his thighs. Go ahead and bend his elbow out of the way. The side of his legs just more gray plastic now you have port on his arm port on his shoulder pseudo port I mentioned earlier on the back of his arm it's not as deep as these are um, then going down the back you've got a lot of molded detail but not really any paint just black stripes and knobs from the front of the alt mode and then more gray and black plastic for breakup the legs are hollow which is unfortunate because they really didn't have to be. There's no 
reason transformation wise for them to be other than plastic saving and then the back of the legs close up real good with the panels from the alt mode and this side is basically the same um, you've got silver on the face and white on the helmet or at least a lighter silver uh, whichever you prefer and then one of his hands does have the molded finger out so that way he can press his own belly buttons and that is pretty much it for his looks we'll go into articulation ball jointed head gets you the full 360 you can look up a bit he can look down a bit he can be confused a bit you've got universal shoulders for the full 360 almost 90 degrees <coughs> sorry about that almost 90 degrees at the shoulder you've got bicep swivel you've got the elbow which goes a little over 90 degrees and then at the wrist uh, you can bend it out on the transformation joint and the transformation joint also bends in a little bit uh, at an angle which is what will help you get the finger in the appropriate spot to push the belly buttons and I'm not sure if that's why that's there but both wrists will do where you can bend it in which is not part of the outward bend for transformation so they let that bend go a little farther to get you that inward movement uh, at the waist he does have the 360 that we did a 180 on for transformation uh, moving the butt flap up the guns in the way a little bit so we'll go ahead and just turn it sideways for now you can get the leg pretty much all the way back the tabs that hold this plate in the place in alt mode are getting in the way a little bit but almost all the way back this knee is not straight you can get pretty much all the way forward you can do out to the side this far oh no i had a collision of some panels in here i thought he could do a full split so yeah he can do your full split um he has the thigh swivel cut below the gray plastic he has 90 degrees of bend at the leg um and that's part of the transformation also i keep pushing his belly buttons and then for the feet you could call this a toe bend if you want but it is a faux ratchet thoop to get the foot folded up into alt mode so i don't know if you would want to count it and then you've got an ankle tilt that goes pretty far not all the way 90 but it goes at least 45 which is not bad and then you can take his gun and he can hold it in either hand when i have him posed i like to have him posed with the gun in this hand because it almost makes it look like his finger is poised on a non-existent trigger like he's ready to go at a moment's notice let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and so there you have that um we're gonna go ahead and move him out of frame and take a look at his cassette and get over this guy's transformation so there you have mr cassette what you're going to do is you're going to pull down on these bottom sections and straighten them out and then rotate forward the gap in the back that wrapped around this is going to be on the back of the leg so you want to rotate this solid well, I shouldn't say solid because there's divots in there too for the design of my camera's having trouble focusing on the uh, translucent plastic. But so you've got kind of feet molded in and stuff. That's how you know it's the front. And you can pull these sections down and rotate the ports off to the side that are the faux uh, sprocket holes for the tape. So you've got the fist details coming forward and then in the back just get your finger on one of these edges back here pull his head away and then rotate it around and there you have him let's go ahead and zoom in again try and get it to focus focus there he is he's got an orange painted faceplate with some blue on the eyes you've got some gold here on the chest everything else I'm 
yep, everything else is unpainted, but you've got color breakup between gray plastic and transparent blue electric-y plastic. Like I said, the clear plastic is not my favorite, but the character, uh, the figure itself has grown on me since getting him. I didn't care for him, but he's fun to play with, so that's him. In his robot mode, you've got some molded in kind of ab-like details there. I want to do something real quick. Give me your gun blaster. I want to see, because I haven't bothered to do this, but I want to see, can you put guns? Yes, you can. He can hold the weapon in those little tape ports and shoot people for blaster. So there you go. All right, blaster. Ooh. Blaster's down. He got shot by Eject because he rejected him. There, you've got Blaster. We'll go ahead and get him into a pose after we zoom out. And we'll go ahead and do some size comparisons. And then we will take a look at what I think of the figure in the end, although I'm pretty sure most of you know that I very much like the figure from my description of him so far my camera is not straight on my table there go ahead and raise this not that much just this much back him up we'll go ahead and try and get eject to stand down here he's not the most stable figure that's one issue i have with eject that isn't super critical, but it is something I have an issue with, is that he doesn't have a fold-out port like uh, Ravage and Laserbeak did. So we'll go ahead and get into our size comparisons now. There you got him with the Rubik's Cube, with Gore Magala, with Bumblebee Movie Bumblebee. There he is with Netflix Soundwave. You can kind of get an idea of the minions being similar sized. Like I said, I wish he had a post like this guy so I could like plug him somewhere just because he, he does like to fall over. He's not super stable, but there you have your two tape guys next to each other. There he is with Studio Series 86 Jazz. And like I said, this is just a size comparison I'm doing to a friend or for a friend. Um, anytime I've shouted out John on my channel for a figure that has had some custom paint done to it, uh, this is the friend I'm talking about. He does have a YouTube channel called Cybertronic Customs, where he shows off his custom, where he shows off his custom painted work. Um, I'll go ahead and leave a link to his channel in the description in case you guys are curious, um, as well as links to my own usual stuff. Twitter, Instagram, playlists, what have you, all in the description down below. And there you have him with MP44, Optimus Prime, uh, for your masterpiece scale. I had to throw Eject in his chest for this comparison because you were barely going to be able to see him in this. And last but not least, there you have him with Prime Jr. looking very small indeed next to this blaster. Um, I feel like it'd be fun to have him in robot mode next to Blaster in his radio mode, and it'd be like reverse mass shifting. That would be great. Anyway, that's that for ya. And there you have Kingdom Blaster, everybody. I went ahead and threw Eject back in the chest after I filmed Prime Jr.'s comparison, and then filmed MP44's, so I just had to just leave him in there. But you know he's there, you kind of see him through the window a little bit maybe but anyway yeah kingdom blaster i really really love this figure um i really wish that soundwave had got the same treatment to be honest um because this figure makes me like that one less because this figure got a new mold and soundwave was a pretty heavy remold of siege but it still had elements from it it looked bad because of it and i wish they had just done what they did for blaster Gave it an all new mold, in my honest opinion. Um, but other than making me not like Soundwave as much, there is nothing I dislike about this figure at all. 
My minor nitpick is the eye paint, which is my copy, so you should not have it. And no port on eject, uh, which is literally just a personal grievance of mine. And it's just because it would make it easier to do some kind of um, display with eject like sitting on his shoulder or his arm or something if he had a port that could fold out. Nothing wrong with either of the figures from a transformation or aesthetic standpoint in either mode as far as the molding goes. The painting for the most part is pretty good. Um, there, The back is pretty barren but other than that um, there's enough paint or plastic color breakup to keep it interesting and I think they just re really really did a good job on this one. If your sound uh, no, if your blaster, I was talking about sound blaster, now I'm mixing all the names up. If your blaster doesn't have paint in the eye that's wonky, go ahead and comment below. If you think that the gun as an antenna was a neato burrito idea, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Go ahead and check out my comment, or not comment, my description links. Like I said, I've got all my usual suspects there, plus a link to Cybertronic Customs, where my friend shows off his custom painted transformers um, I actually have a couple here I don't know that any of them have made it on the channel for proper review besides maybe Dragoon for that comparison but one of them will someday um, I would have done the dragon storm that he painted for me but it lost two of its heads because the joint on that head is not good so I'd have to find get the heads around and glue them on and the articulation would be missing and so I might never review that figure sadly either way tangent over uh, go ahead and check out my playlist and go ahead and like the video if you liked it go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more ring the bell so you know when the videos are up and you can also check out my Twitter and Instagram for hopefully I'll post pictures before the videos come out so you get a little bit more forewarning than just the video is up ring a ding ding and that's about all I gotta say so I will see you guys in the next review which hopefully will be on the normal schedule because this guy is taking the place of uh, Studio Series Cup uh, his little Monday spot and I feel like he's neglected because I've had to skip over him two or three weeks now <laughs> poor Cup Anyway, um, we've got Springer later this week, and if we're lucky and I don't get anything else new to review, Cup will be next Monday after this comes out. I'll see you guys.